there are people that you meet that change your outlook forever. And I want to talk about one such person. It was when I was sleeping out in London. And, you know, normally I'd be outside, huddled up somewhere. But someone told me that the toilets at Piccadilly Circus Underground were open during the night. So I tried to find a cubicle, but there was always a queue. It was always difficult. And you'd knock on all the doors and they were all occupied. One night I arrived there and I was wandering up and I pressed, I pushed the last door in the line and it opened. So I couldn't believe my luck. I got inside, I locked the door and I was trying to settle for the night. There was a big pipe behind my head and I had to try and manoeuvre to the left or to the right and work out which way would suit me best. And just as I was about to doze off, there was a knock on the door. And a very posh voice said, excuse me, could we share a room tonight? Do you have room for one? So I opened the door and let him in. And here was this older man, long straggly hair, a big coat, a rope around his waist. He looked the very embodiment of the vagrant. And we talked for five hours. There was no sleep to be had. And he told me a story that made me reevaluate everything. And it's this. He had been very successful in business. He lived in Middlesex. I think it was near Stanmore. And he was a very successful businessman. And one day, he bought his wife a sports car. And he took her out of the house with a little daughter. They had a daughter who was four years old. And he said to her, darling, this is for you. And she screeched with delight and he said, look, here are the keys. Take the little one for a spin. And when you come back, I'll have another surprise for you. So he waved them off down the driveway. A long driveway from how we described it. And he never saw them again. Because she hit a tree. And both their lives were ended in an instant. When he found this out, he told me that he realised then that all his adult life, he had expressed his love in material things. And he didn't have time. He didn't spend the time that if he was to give himself a chance to do it all over again, he would give them time and the love that he felt for them. But he said, I lost what mattered more to me than anything else in the world. And all the money I gained meant nothing. It crumbled to dust in my hand. So he left and he'd been on the road for seven years. And he said, I am happy now because I cannot bring my wife and child back, but I can keep their memories alive as I walk around the country. And he asked me to tell him what mattered to me more than anything else. And I pondered the question and I said, I just want to live my life as me. I don't want to be another person. I want to be me. And he said to me, I think you're a fantastic person. You told me you like playing music. Go and do it. But whatever you do in life, 
remember what's important to you. Never compromise that for money. And to this day, money has always been secondary to doing the things I want to do and doing them well. Money is a consequence of what I do. It is not an end in itself. I learned a lesson that day that has never left me. And that is the power of our memories and the people we meet and we listen to.